In the murky dawn of the 25th of April 1915, a small armada of open rowboats approached these shores. Behind me is Anzac Cove. This is where the Glippy legend was born. The winds of change haven't altered life on Gallipoli. Women still toil in the fields. Shepherds tend their flocks. And the cemeteries are timeless. The Turkish gardeners are busy. There are 31 Commonwealth cemeteries alone on the Gallipoli Peninsula. The headstones need few words to tell their stories. The cemeteries were built where the men fell, overlooking beaches, on hillsides, beneath ridges. Theirs is a terrible beauty. On the other side of the slender peninsula, ships pass through the Dardanelles, a passage that's been fought over for thousands of years. The Gallipoli campaign was a fight for the Dardanelles. Turkish people refer to 1915 as the Çanakkale War because they won the sea victory in March 1915 in this harbour town. From Çanakkale, it's a half-hour ferry ride across the Dardanelles to the Gallipoli Peninsula. All visitors are welcome on the peninsula. Out of a bloody war, the Anzacs and Turks have forged a remarkable friendship, one built on respect. The battlefield itself is no more than a few hundred hectares, but a huge amount happened in this confined space. From the beaches, you look up at the landmark that the Anzacs called the Sphinx. This view taunted them for eight months as the Turks and Anzacs fought for the high ground, both sides paying a dreadful human price. Author Les Carline described Gallipoli as a great boneyard. The cemeteries were built soon after the Great War ended. Each cemetery is beautifully maintained, but the narrative is always of young lives cut tragically short. Private John Simpson, the man with the donkey, served at Gallipoli for just 25 days. The memorial at Chanak Bear is a sacred place for New Zealanders. 87% of the New Zealanders who went to Gallipoli were either killed or wounded. Statues pay tribute to the manner in which the opposing forces treated each other with decency and respect. This honours a Turkish soldier who on the first day of fighting emerged from a trench under a white flag and courageously carried a wounded English captain to safety, an action witnessed by First Lieutenant Richard Casey, later Australia's Governor-General. We showed the world that Turks are clean warriors and all they were doing those days was they were just defending their homeland and this is what anybody would do. This memorial bears the immortal words of Turkey's leader at Gallipoli, who became father of the nation, Ataturk. You, the mothers, wipe away your tears. Your sons are now lying in our bosom and are in peace. They have become our sons as well. Gallipoli for us is a day when we show the world that Aussies and Turks or the Kiwis and Turks are not enemies. We are very proud to have you here. Everybody understands that we are all friends. On the peninsula, rural life is timeless. Sheep graze beneath the Turkish monument, while Turks remember the 80,000 of their countrymen who died. This is the fourth day we've filmed here at Gallipoli and for the first three days it was blue skies and picture postcard stuff. 
The coastline here is as beautiful as anywhere you'd see in the world. But today, there's a misty rain. The place feels eerie. Nothing like what the diggers would have experienced. They even had snow. But here today, you can feel the spirit of Anzac. Gallipoli is enshrined in the consciousness of all the nations who fought here. In this place, Turkey, Australia and New Zealand all found a new sense of nationhood. And yet the battlefield remains a temple of reflection, a memorial to the fallen, to men who were the best of a generation. Sometimes, you know, when you walk around, you see the gravestone of someone who was 19 years of age, then another one 16 years of age, and you think, look at the kids around you now. They have the iPads, the iPhones, they have, you know, lots of other things. But those days, these people were not playing with anything. They were coming here and they were given some rifles, and they were here to fight for something, and they are dead now. So when you ask me what you feel when you walk around, I say, what if? What if?